welcome back everyone you know I was really hesitant whether or not I should make this video because uh, I had some of you not all of you but some of you have been asking me could you please clarify the certain confusions about PlayStation 4 Pro uh, can you just tell us your own thoughts your own opinions because uh, I noticed um, this when this whole 4k thing started this year it really, I mean, not this year, last year. I mean, it really kind of kicked off last year in September. Uh, there has been so much uh, confusion about 4K and about upscaling and about HDR and about Dolby Vision and about dynamic resolution, checkerboarding, all of this technical jogger. There's been so much confusion. And I totally understand why there's so much confusion because... A lot of people still were using their PlayStation uh, PlayStation 4s, uh, which is the uh, 7000 model, uh, CUH 7000 model, right? That's the 2013 launch model that we had since 2013, all the way till 2016 when Pro and the Slim got released. Um, and um, I understand why there's so much confusion going on why, why so many people are being confused by the all this technical jogger of uh, checkerboarding dynamic resolution upscaling there's even people out there that don't even know what the upscaling even means uh, let alone checkerboarding and dynamic resolution and why does the fluctuate resolution between uh, 1800p to 1900p to 1440p basically means 2k to 2.5k to 3.2k and then drops down to 2.1k and 2k that's a fluctuation of that resolution uh, and I understand all that stuff and I understand why is that all confusing to somebody who is not into video uh, home theater video production resolutions who is not professional who doesn't study that you know, if you're not Richard from, uh, you know, Digital Foundry, of, of course, for him, that's going to be easy to understand because he already, that's what he does for a living. You know, that's all he does is resolutions and uh, graphics and uh, rendering and, and frame rates and all that other stuff. So for him, that's easy to understand. Uh, it's like for Mark Cerny, that's easy to understand because they're professionals. That's what they do. That's their language, you know. It's like somebody who's designing a website who's using the different uh, HTMLs to use the certain code wordings uh, to create that page. So he totally understand what's behind all these uh, codes there behind it, like all different words they're put into to bring that uh, web web page and HTML. You know. Now I'm getting technical. All right, so let's talk about uh, my thoughts about PlayStation 4 Pro. Because the question that's been floating around, it's always been from both sides of the aisle, from, from Xbox One uh, S side of the aisle to the PlayStation Pro side of the aisle. And we all know that, that Sony and Microsoft always have been at war, always have been at each other's throat. It's always been a competition between these two since 2001, ever since they released the Xbox, original Xbox in 2001, November. Uh, it was pretty much a console that was slowly, but even back then, let me tell you, even when Xbox, original Xbox One was released, still PlayStation 2 into, into its uh, second and third year was still holding its own. And, and play, I would say PlayStation 2 is probably one of the best consoles uh, that, that Sony has ever released. Uh, there's no question about it, it was, a, it was a, the, the longest uh, lasting console and really no questions asked PlayStation 2 is one of the was one of the best consoles in my opinion uh, it really held its own with the, uh, the chip that it had inside and everything all right so let's let's talk about PlayStation 4 Pro I don't want to go down that memory lane of history but let's talk about PlayStation 4 Pro and how do I feel and the reason I'm showing you this is because I just need to have something in the background so you guys can see what I mean what I'm talking about um, here we go the reason I left it here because questions question has always been arising and rising about is PlayStation 4 Pro 
a 4K console? That question has been popping out not just in my comment section but on a bunch of other forums and th threads and everywhere you know is PlayStation 4 Pro a 4k console now I can give you a straight answer and just by me giving you a straight answer is going to trigger some people and we all know who these people are going to be that's good they're going to be triggered by this so the simple answer is yes PlayStation 4 Pro is a 4k console now what do I mean by that when I say it's a 4k console well I'm gonna to explain to you what I mean by that number one the reason I say PlayStation 4 Pro is a 4k console it's because it outputs 3840 by 2160 P resolution on your TV okay therefore it has the ability to upscale certain games even the games are running on 1080p but thankfully it has a 4.2 teraflops capable GPU and 8 gigs of GDDR5 memory RAM that can actually check your board and upscaled and output different fluctuating resolutions between 2.5k to 3.2k all the way to 4k in some instances like uh, NBA 2k17 FIFA 17 Skyrim Neo uh, you know there's a bunch of games out there now that they can output that in 84k resolution uh, and then it has HDR high dynamic range so it is a 4k console but is it a native 4k console uh, I wouldn't go that far to call it a native 4k console it does some native 4k games but it doesn't it's not a full it's not a full-fledged native 4k console all right it's not a it's not that but for people to say that it's not a 4k console it's really then what would you call it then you call it 1080p you know it does have dynamic 4k resolution but now let, let's talk about where this confusion is coming from and now this is where Sony fanboys will hate me but I have to criticize Sony for this and Mark Cerny and Andrew House for confusing people you know in the press conference last year when they first announced PlayStation 4 Pro they used a lot of technical jogger and you gotta remember Andrew House and Mark Cerny I like all of you guys I like both of you but the problem is this what you were doing what you did on that press conference you were confusing people you gotta remember majority of people that you're talking to big giant masses of people that are Sony members and they've been Sony members since 2000 and you know or since 1998 okay they've been hardcore fans out there right you're talking to these masses all over the world hundreds of millions of, of fans right they, they're not ready for this kind of technical jogger all right it's not like you went through went through a um, some uh, ITT tech whatever they're like into all this technical stuff so they can understand the language you're using because you, what you were doing on that press conference you were confusing uh, regular Joe and regular Mary the ones that actually go ahead and buy these consoles and therefore how did you confuse them well simply even by reading this right here dynamic 4k okay right here people will get confused as soon as you put this dynamic 4k sure people can learn it they can go and research it but still they're gonna get confused because they need to understand what does that mean dynamic resolution okay what's what's the uh, basis between that code name that's being used why is it called dynamic and why does it fluctuate why does it go between 1800p to 1400p why is it doing that or on, on a certain levels and why does it go up to 1800p and fluctuate all of these things it's confusing people 
you know it's confusing some because they don't understand that they don't understand resolutions you know they don't even understand upscaling and when you start using all this technical jogger on your press conference what you're doing is you're confusing the masses now do I know what this means of course I know what the checkerboarding means of course I know what the upscaling means and of course I know why it fluctuates between you know 2.5k and then all the way to 3.2k 1900p and then all the way down to 1440p I understand why it's doing it so that way you can keep that steady frame rate and keep that steady uh, checkerboard 4k resolution I understand that you know and then people think that they're running on a native 4k just because they see that badge that says 2160p okay oh this must be native 4k you know it's not it's it's uh, fluctuating dynamic 4k resolution and all you should have said is this this is how I would have done the press conference instead of using all this technical jogger I would have said hello this is Andrew house and let me show you something and I would say uh, PlayStation 4 Pro it's not a full-fledged native 4k console it is a 4k console that has the abilities of 4k if you have said that then it would have cleared that up a little bit better that has the ability of 4k that can reach up to certain resolutions and render the HDR now he might have said it like that but the way he said it was too technical he was using the word checkerboarding and then upscaling and then rendering and HDR and uh, it was going too technical in it you know and, and got people confused it does some native 4k let's let's be honest uh, PlayStation 4 Pro does some some native 4k games but it's not a full-fledged native 4k game a gaming machine if it was a full-fledged native 4k gaming machine then every game would be native 4k there would be no issues there'd be no hassle uh, but but to say to people but for people to think that it's not a 4k uh, console it's wrong because it is a 4k console it does reaches a near 4k resolution and it does uh, have HDR built into it and it does outputs HDMI 2.0 YUV for 20 and 422 uh, resolution on there hell it'll even can reach up to to RGB if you wanted it you know depending on your TV so it is a 4k console it's just not a full-fledged native 4k console you know what I mean so I know this video will trigger some people because some people will say well no he wasn't uh, confusing come on he, he did he didn't confuse me because I already knew what he was talking about I know what he meant by I don't even know when Richard from digital foundry when he talks about dynamic resolution checkerboard I understand why it fluctuate I understand why he cannot just keep it why Neo cannot just stay at the uh, 4k native it has to fluctuate down to uh, 1900 to 1800 and go back up to uh, 4k again so they can keep that steady frame rate I understand why it does that but that's a tech that's a technical jogger I can talk technical language all day long and I'll put you guys to sleep you guys will understand the goddamn thing I'm saying that was my whole point I like PlayStation 4 Pro I have it I own it I like it I like what it does it's definitely better than the slim and I like what they have with the PlayStation um, a 4.50 beta 4 that they already put out there I like that too I like that the ability to be able to plug in my hard drive the ability to take screenshot put as a wall, wallpaper the ability to read different files w as soon as I get my Seagate hard, hard drive I will do that separate video on that to show you what different type of files you can read on a hard drive via PlayStation 4 Pro I like what they're doing but I just thought this confusion is there because you still have people out there who don't even know what the upscaling means the word upscaling it's it's how about this in in basic terms I explain once and for all to people what up scaling means and what down scaling means okay what is the upscaling means in it, it simple term means that I'm magnifying something okay I want to magnify let's say this enhanced gameplay letter I want to magnify it 
I want to magnify this to 4K. Let's say this is 480p and I want to upscale this and magnify it to fill in the pixels of this screen to be 4K. So that's what basically upscaling means. Downscaling means is you're lowering it down uh, to that resolution from original upscale that you were at at 2160p now you're downscaling it to 1080p you know it's like it's like a magnifying glass like zooming in zooming out okay it's like to fill in that screen all right like this entire screen has to be filled in right now this is on my 4k tv m55 c2 and this has to be filled in. These pixels has to be filled in. They has to be magnified. It has to be upscaled. Now, just because something it's upscaled, it doesn't mean it's a native 4K. You guys need to separate the two. I don't give a fuck what they call it. Checkerboarding, dynamic, uh, doesn't matter what they call it. It's still upscale. It's just a better source upscale with a different higher resolution. But it doesn't mean that it's a native 4K. Okay, native word. When they use the word native, native means the source. <laughs> okay, when they say native 4K, that's the source that material is filmed, or that's the source that material or that game it's running on. It's running on that native source. If they say uh, this game it's running on a native 1080p 1K, which is 1080p. That's the native source that game it's running. Four to six. It's running on 1080p, 60 frames per second. That's the native source that Forza 6 it's running on. Now when I'm magnifying it, when I upscale that source of 1080p, it looks much better on uh, 4K TV. That's what it does. It upscales that game. Now when you're using dynamic 4K resolution, alright, so you're using a little bit higher source than a 1080p you're using 1440p all right using 1440p resolution and then upscaling it to 4k so therefore that native source of 1440p or native source like Watch Dogs 2 is using 1800p it fluctuates actually between 1800 to 1900 but it stays at the 1800p now that's a pretty good uh, that's two that's almost 1.8 to 2k almost uh, a 2k resolution it's like a 2k resolution being upscaled to 4k now it's outputting a 2k source Watch Dogs 2 outputs a 2k resolution source native source of 2k and then it's upscaling it to 4k so therefore the dynamic resolution is going to look much much better you know Final Fantasy it's outputting a 1440p native source and it's upscaling it to 4k with HDR so you guys need to distinguish yourselves between what the native source is and then what the uh, upscaling is that's filling that in so remember always keep an eye on that native when you listen to dig digital foundry Richard make sure you listen to what he says about the native source if he tells you <coughs> the native source it's uh, 1440p or 1800p then he'll let you know that that 1800p native source is being upscaled to fill in the pixels 8 million pixels to 4k that's what that means and that's why they call it dynamic 4k with HDR of course all right now if it's fully fledged native like NBA 2k 17 then it's fully filled in original pixels in the entire screen then you're getting yourself a native 4k source like I did yesterday which I'm gonna do early which I'm do right now if I finish this video I'm gonna do a comparison where I'm gonna show you a native 4k ghost recon wildlands original source native 4k source with high settings and you will see just how sharp that thing is and how detailed that is because it's using a native source there's no downscaling upscaling there's no dynamic there's no checkerboarding there's no upscaling it's boom slap in the face 3840 2160p fully fledged native 4k now that's something <coughs> that Phil Spencer it's claiming that he's going to do coming this 
June on in uh, E3 Los Angeles. <laughs> okay, he's claiming that he that Xbox Scorpio is going to be able to handle native 4K 60 frames per second with no problems. Now, that's what he's claiming. Obviously, we're going to need to see that proof. I'll have to have Scorpio in my hands, plug it into my TV to see if this is true. Digital Foundry will do testing on it as well to see if this is in fact the truth. That's why we have these tests. That's why we have all these channels. That's why we talk about this. But it's also important, and I cannot stress this enough, <clears throat> it's why it's so important that you don't just memorize something. Don't just memorize something. You need to understand it. You need to understand what 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 the hell do they mean by this dynamic? Why they're calling it dynamic? We all understand the word, the emphasis, the word dynamic, and, and what it stands for. But why is it being put there in 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 behind, in front of 4K? Why is it being called dynamic? You need to understand that. Once you understand what's being uh, dynamic, then you have some technical basis of what that is. Once you understand how upscaling works works then you're not going to be confused what the upscaling is once you understand what the native means and why I call it native then you're going to be you once you have that understanding then you're not going to be confused once you understand what the checkerboarding means and why it fluctuates then you'll understand what that means all of these things guys uh, it's something I didn't just wake up one day or somebody said that on this video I wake up one day and, and oops I dreamed of upscaling Blu-ray movies. You know, and a lot of people are like, well, this guy, Jolster, right? I hate to mention him again, bring him in here. He's becoming like my own Yerrick, like Jolster. He says, oh, he's showing you the uh, playback, <laughs> playback settings. I mean, right there, when you start showing me playback settings from a Blu-ray, right there tells me you have no idea what you're talking about. Playback settings, we all understand. We all understand that 1080p, that's as far as the Blu-ray goes. Blu-ray can only output 1920 by 1080p, 24 to 60 hertz, okay? But in this case, it's 24 uh, because they use 24 for the films. And that's all Blu-ray can do. It's 1920 by 1080p. Blu-ray cannot go any further than 1K. Blu-ray is 1K native source. Let's just keep that in check. What he forgot to mention, obviously, was that that playback setting that we all understand, it's 1080p, it's being upscaled because you're upscaling it through a 4K capable machine that has HDMI 2.0 and that I can output that resolution to 2160p and it magnifies that 1080p source which you are playing to 4k so that's why you have that badge that says 4k same thing goes to the Xbox One S it's a 4k capable machine you know it's not a 4k native gaming machine but it's a 4k capable machine but see all of these things guys it, it, it and I've seen this man I've seen this on my uh, channel I see it every day man and it gives me a headache just just like you know you have Google you have libraries you have every opportunity to learn these things and understand these things there is no reason for you not to understand this unless you don't want to understand it or unless you have an agenda there's two things that can only happen either a you are a Xbox fanboy and you just fucking hate Sony PlayStation and you don't care you don't want to know you're not interested there's groups of people like that you know then you got other groups of people who are just you know Sony hardcore fanboys and, and they're like no nah, it is a native 4k machine or it's like it's 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 you know it's a super great machine all right that's a problem too you need to detach yourself from all this fanboyism. This is why I don't like fanboyism. You need to detach yourself from all of this fanboyism and look at the facts, learn the facts, and understand all of these di these things. Don't just memorize something and put it out there. A lot of people out there just want to make money, quick money, grab, 
and memorize something. You need to understand it, man. People ask me, why did I become so fast growing within five months uh, since September? 10,000 plus growing subscribers. It might show up to you 9,000 something, but right now, YouTube, uh, you know, algorithm is not that great. They cannot show you the updates. What I'm seeing on my report, my report is showing 10,000 plus growing. There's a reason why that is, guys. Uh, did I make some mistakes in the beginning? Of course, you learn from your mistakes. And then you want to learn. What happened is, okay, since I made a bunch of mistake in the, mistakes in the beginning, I said, well, I got to learn this shit. How did I learn it? I didn't go to these other bullshit forums and all these other threads, which is the cesspool of garbage that's floating down the ocean of internet. I went and I went to the uh, Barnes and Nobles, picked a bunch of books on this stuff, on the resolution, on the upscaling, how does it work, about the TVs, different types of panel TVs, what are these deals made of and how do they emit, what, what are these panels made of, what different types of panels they're using, what's the material they're using on these panels, why the resolution have different coatings like uh, YUV, 420, 422, why is it being, why these color bits are being acknowledged by that, you know, between 8-bit and 10-bit, uh, and the difference between the 8-bit and 10-bit, and the diagram of it, and how does that look, and how does that work, I don't want to go into too much technical jargon to explain that, because I could be doing this video for <laughs> 3 hours, 4 hours, but I went and read about that, I went straight to the source, that's what I did, I said to myself, okay, alright, if you want to learn how to fly an airplane, well, guess what you're going to do? You're going to go straight through the source of FAA to learn about aviation, federal aviation, to learn about how to do that, how to get licensed, how to uh, communicate with the tower and all these other things, how to uh, fly the Cessna airplane. You're going to learn about it. You're going to learn how to fly a plane. You go straight to the source. You know? You want to learn how the car engine works or well, you go straight to the source to the manufacturer to the mechanics who designed that engine how does that engine works what is the basis of that engine why does it have a fuel injection what is th what the hell is the fuel injection you know in the older cars what what is the mixture that carburetor has all of these things you learn it you understand it you don't just memorize it you understand why it that material is there and what the purpose of that stuff that's in there is for you don't just memorize things you understand them and that's what I did guys I didn't just wake up one morning and just boom out of my ass I like ooh, I know about 4k no and I don't call myself a super 4k guy I just call myself mr. 4k upscaler you see I don't call myself mr. 4k native guy because mainly what I've been doing is been upscaling and that's how I started and upscaling, it's nothing new. Upscaling's been around, guys. You know, the word upscaling's been used forever. Really. So, it, it's nothing new. And that's why I really wanted to make this video, because uh, I know, even though I made this video, it's going to trigger a lot of people. Because we all know, uh, you know, this is a cesspool. YouTube, it's a big cesspool of all kinds of stuff. You know, you got haters, you got trolls, you got, I mean, you got all kinds of garbage out there. It's internet. It's just part of the deal. You got to remember, uh, if you're going to create your YouTube channel and you become bigger, be, expect to have a lot of haters. There's going to be people out there, there's something going to hate the fact that you're making it and they're not making it, okay? I usually don't emphasize on those kind of people. I just block them and that's that. Uh, then you're going to have people that want to debate you. Uh, now, I'm all open for the debates. I said this billions of times. I'm all open for the debates. But if your debate is forcing me to believe something that is not true, factually not true, then I'm sorry, man. I cannot buy into your debate. I will not accept that. Okay? I will not accept it because it's not true. If you can come to me with some evidence and present me that evidence and it's true, then I'll shake your hand and say, okay, man, 
I was wrong about this. Obviously, you're right. There's effectual evidence. This is how it works. I need to study more about this. I need to learn more about this. I need to go in there, read about this, buy some books about it, get straight to the source and learn how this works. So that way I, know, I understand it. I don't just memorize it. I understand it. There's two different, there's two different school of thoughts here, guys. A bunch of you just want to memorize something without understanding it. That's dangerous. That'll be like you learning how to use a gun, going to an instructor, gun instructor, gun instructor on a shooting range, and you have no idea how to take the gun apart. You have no idea how the uh, mechanism works on that gun, and then, uh, how, how does a bullet exit out of the uh, barrel, how does it triggers it. If you don't know the basics, basics of how the gun works, then you shouldn't have a gun in your possession, bottom line. Okay, you should understand that and you should learn how it works. You cannot pass the military, you cannot pass the uh, boot camp if you don't know how the guns works. You gotta understand that, how they work. Uh, you know, or if you wanna get certified as a CCW, uh, concealed weapon <laughs> license, you gotta learn how it works. I'm just using this as one example, guys. You know, whether it's aviation, whether it's you know you being a gun instructor going to get a gun, or teaching somebody how to use a gun, uh, you gotta know the. You have to understand how a gun works, or you have to understand how aviation works. You have to, let's say, you want to be a drummer. Drummer, you gotta understand how how to properly use the drumsticks and how it works. You know, there, there's a certain technique and mechanism. Even if you be a masseuse therapist, uh, you know, you gotta understand the technique how to do it. You want to be a surgeon, obviously, you gotta know anatomy of the body. You gotta know. You have to understand how each nerve is connected. All of these things, you got to know it. You know, it's like everything else, man. You got to understand it. Don't just memorize it. Understand it. You know, you cannot be a dentist without understanding how much you need to go in the root so you don't damage the, uh, the bone. I mean, all of these things and the, where the nerve is located, you have to understand it. Don't just memorize it. If it's like anything else in life. You got to understand it. So, same thing goes for this. You need to understand all of this technical jogger. What the heck does it mean? Before you can jump in and say, okay, since I know understand what they're talking about, I have some knowledge. Now I can move forward into this new 4K world and I can have a debate. And at the same time, since you have that knowledge, you can also educate other people and let them know, how to properly learn about this and how to understand it. <laughs> That's all there is about, guys. You cannot just go on the Google. And yes, you can research it, but you remember, guys, when you research shit on the Internet, there's going to be a bunch of misinformation as well. It's a big pile of garbage that's on the Internet, on the forums, on threads. So you really got to be careful. I recommend go to Barnes & Noble's, Pick up a book and learn about it there. They have books about upscaling, about 4K, home theater, all of that in detail. Pick up a book, man. You know, yes, you can learn from Google, but you gotta, it's, it's gonna take you time because you gotta get to the right source. And if you're regular Joe and regular Mary, then you're gonna have a hard time believing what's right, what's not right. You're gonna be confused. So instead of being confused, go pick up a book, man, and learn it from book. Once you learn it from the straight source, then when you go to the internet, then you say, ah, check that, off, 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 that's bullshit, 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 ah, this is real. It's, it, that's how I do it, man. Alright, this video has gone longer than I thought, but it was a necessary video that I felt I needed to make. And just by me making this video, I'm pretty sure, as always, there will be some triggered people out there with dislikes. There's, there's nothing I can do about that. And they're simply there... The reason you see these dislikes, they're, sitting, they're, they're only there for one reason, because they hate the fact that I, have the ch that I have the channel, and they hate the fact that I am successful. Well, I hate to break into you haters, but I'm here. I ain't going nowhere. I ain't going nowhere. I'm here. So get used to it. That's all I got to say. Now, one more thing I want to say. This is regarding uh, Xbox Scorpio. This June, Los Angeles at E3, if you want to be the first 10,000, 20,000 at that five minutes mark when Phil Spencer announces pre-orders for the Xbox One, I mean for the Xbox Scorpio, 
make sure you have your Amazon ready as soon as you announce it man you click order pre-order because if you don't pre-order it on that same day that he announces uh, you're not gonna be able to get it in November or maybe if you're lucky after Christmas this year or who knows maybe even January you might have to wait till you get it so do yourself a favor as soon as he announces it make sure you sit by your Amazon account and order pre-order that immediately that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna pre-order it as soon as he opens his words and the Xbox Scorpio will be able for pre-orders right now boom you click pre-order it fucking immediately you do that shit because if you don't well guess what you're gonna end up watching my videos on Scorpio and you're not gonna be able to get it till maybe January February if you're lucky or if you want to cash out thousand dollars on uh, eBay but why the fuck would you want to do that because you know there's gonna be people just buying bundles of Scorpios so they can sell it on eBay uh, that's what they do uh, there's people on, on eBay they don't even give a fuck about the consoles they're gonna buy bundles of uh, well the, the the one that's coming out <laughs> Nintendo switch they're gonna pre-order a bunch of bundles like because like truckload of bundles of Nintendo switches and then they're gonna put these Nintendo switches on the eBay and they're gonna sell it for like eight hundred dollars nine hundred dollars six hundred dollars seven hundred dollars and they're gonna make like three to four to five to eight thousand dollars to even ten thousand dollars on something that cost three hundred dollars so uh, you know I really should be giving some kind of an award or maybe some kind of an Oscar even though today is the Oscar day honestly I really helped a lot dude I helped let me see I helped the Xbox one S push to sales with the Microsoft even though that 4k USD player was a reason enough and HDR was reason enough for the console to sell but let's face it I did have some influence I did have some influence because the way my videos reached with half a million to uh, I had like uh, 10 or 8 videos like half a million that's close to like three and a half to four to four million people that's being reached that's four million consoles being sold right there so that's an influence right there and I know some of you might disagree but I firmly believe that's an influence I had on the Xbox one S because nobody was doing this stuff till I started doing it nobody was getting their cameras out and start filming till I pushed this and I see a lot of influence out there right now and that's great I like the fact that people they're excited doing this because quite honestly I was getting sick and tired of watching walkthroughs and video captures and Elgato this Elgato that live streams everybody's copying the same shit just to make a quick buck and their commentary is not even that entertaining okay <laughs> even though I did that myself so I think I influenced the Xbox One S console sales there's no question about that I think I influenced the uh, PlayStation 4 Pro sales. If you go right now to Best Buy or other places, you'll see that they're being sold out. <laughs> you might see one or two, but usually they, they don't last too long on the shelves. Did I influence that? Yes, I did influence that as well. Uh, was I right about PlayStation VR? Yes, I was right about PlayStation VR. I told everyone that intentionally, intentionally, not by <laughs> accident, intentionally, Sony is going to make a shortage of PlayStation VR so they can collect a bunch of cash on it. And this was, this shortage will continue till April. And I think in April, uh, I would say mid-April, like April 15th or April 20th, spring, you'll see, okay, now PlayStation VR is available everywhere in the stores. Plenty of bundles, single bundle, blah, 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 standalone, full bundle, bunch of games, and you'll see that. Okay, that's just the way business works, guys. I know this firsthand because I know people who actually work at these corporations. I'm not going to name names, but I know some people who work at these corporations. You'd be surprised the kind of people I know, but I'm not going to mention it here. Anyway, did I influence a lot of these things? Yes, I did. I think I did. And just like I'm influence, influencing you right now by talking about this stuff, now you're going to go, oh man, Mr. 4K has been talking about this. Let me go to the to the bookstore, see if I can find some books on it. I mean, which I should put put the link down below on, on, on the books. that I might do a separate video on that where I'm going to show you the books 
top five books you need to read uh, for 4K and upscaling and resolution stuff like that. All right, this video has really turned into a goddamn long video, but it is a video that was necessary, guys. This was something that was necessary to at least give you some. How about this? Let me put it this way. Let me rephrase this. This video is really for you to open the door, to open the curtain, instead of you looking through one uh, lens, one round tiny lens, I'm giving you a wide lens, wide screen, or how about IMAX lens? I'm giving you an IMAX lens so you can see much further down from left to right to up and down. And you can understand a little bit better about the difference between memorizing something and understanding something it's very important okay all right guys i gotta end this video remember my next video is going to be uh part two on ghost recon wildlands pc versus playstation 4 pro and versus xbox one s however on the part two i'm going to connect my pc directly to a uh Samsung KS8000 and we're going to uh, do a comparison right there and then okay all right guys sorry about this long video but I felt that this video was necessary very necessary for me to make hopefully it helps I know it will help some people but I also know that this won't do any good to haters simple-minded haters and you know fanboys and simply trolls they have nothing better to do just troll all day long okay all right so that's it later see you in the next video take care guys have a good one have a nice oscar day